we are in Shar Aleph, Tarek Dalad, in the middle of the Haggah, which is extremely exciting and wonderful. <laughs> You understand Yiddishkeit, and you understand how it works, and I realize that well, there's so much more to understand. But, um, but what we were saying was, let me just refresh your memories. What we're saying is that in the circle, Kadosh Baruch Hu and all of the Olamos Sel Yoynos, which are up there, which we really are not privy to much information about, whatever's going on there, and then there's the base of Migdash, and then there's the Atom. And we thought that the base of Migdash was a building, which is a building structure, an edifice, which was Mechuvan, Keneged, the base of Migdash Shomala, the Yerushalayim Shomala, all comes out. I'm uh, learning that it's much more than that, the Zayar says. It's that the, the base of Migdash Lamata is actually a microcosm of the oil of meaning, meaning uh, what, as much as we don't understand about the higher worlds, and we don't have no idea, nobody's seen them, and can describe them, but we, with the Beis Hamikdash, there was a um, sort of a map, <coughs> a model of the oil of So it was much more than just a place. And that's why we learned that B'Tzalel had to be um, a guttel and we know that if you look at the um, the spheros of the spheros of Akharish Baruch Hu, so the higher spheros are Chachma, Bina, and Das. Those are the higher spheros. And it wasn't just like, oh, here is Batsal, Amalia, Sirach, Chachma, Bina, and Das, like, oh, he was a smart guy. It wasn't that. He had access to the, to the Kesser. In other words, those words are Meduyat. He had actual access to the oil. He had a Havana even more than Moshe Rabbeinu had, in the in the El Yainim, and he was the one that was able to build it down here based on what he saw up there. Yechesla had a shtickle yad in this too, you know, like yeah. <laughs> able to see the Merkava, but the Merkava is just one piece of it. He had before it was given now. What? He had before it was so, given. So, Eina Kadosh Baruch Hu Noi Saint Chachma, Lamishi Yesh Bay Chachma, the Gemara learns from Betzalo. So, it means that um, he had something, Chachma. And, and now we can learn that with with uh, Diuk. It's not that, you know, Hashem doesn't give Chachma unless you have Chachma. Okay, you got to be smarter, then Hashem makes you smarter. Um, that, that's the superficial way of looking at it. In the Kesser, he had Chachma. He had himself Chachma. But Amalia, in other words, he had one branch of the of the segel of the Kesser. So he had Chachma. But Amalia, more Chachma. Okay, now that you have Chachma, so I'll give you also Tvuna Ubedas. And Rechaim Elohim brings a Pasuk in, um, in, by, from Shlomo HaMelech. Um, there's a Pasuk, Hashem Bechachma Yosad Aretz Koinein Shamayim Besvuna Bedatoi Tehoimais Nifku. So the, the, it's, meaning again, it's not three kinds of smarts. It's all, that's, that is the Kasser. That is the highest part of the spheres, which we don't understand. And Abitzal also didn't understand it, but he had Chachma. So the Chachma, um, that once he had some Chachma, and, and um, the Muslims as far as say, uh, which I have no reason to doubt, that what was his Chachma, how did he get the first, like, how does anybody get the first Chachma? Hashem doesn't give you Chachma unless you have Chachma, but how do you get the Chachma? So, Reish is Chachma, Yer is Hashem. This is something we can do, is have your Shemayim, to the point that, that that's the first chachma. The, the, in other words, the Reish's chachma is not the, uh, I'm sorry, Yeres Hashem is not the whole chachma, but that's the doorway to this piece of chachma and the chachma being of das. And, and when you have that little bit of chachma, once you walk through the door, Kadosh Baruch Hu pulls you in <coughs> the whole chachma thing. You get to understand the whole thing. So uh, your Shemayim is your key. Or the, the um, you know, the Gemara talks about on Shabbos, Mavteches Chitzonius, Mavteches Pnimius. This is the Sha'arim to Chachma. So um, it's quite a, an amazing insight into Bezalel that he had access to the Kesser. It doesn't mean that, that, that you and I, at least I, understand this at all. Like, what, what did he see? What did he do? I don't know. Now, I just, I just want to point out something here, that 
But Salo was not building the Beis Hamikdash. He was building a uh, you know a prototype of what's going to be the Beis Hamikdash. But the Mishkan itself was something. So what you had with the Beis Hamikdash, uh, it seems to be in Svar, what you had with the Beis Hamikdash is you added to this um, to this unbelievable dogma of the Elamis El Yarnim, you also added the location. Location, location, location. So here, here is the piece of uh, uh, real estate here in, in Aretz, which is Mechuvan Keneged, the 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 Masal Yainim, Kodesh HaKadosh. So what you, what you, so what, but Batalo didn't have that. Batalo conceived of a Mishkan, which was portable. So you had all the pieces, but you didn't have the location. And then when, the, when Shlomo Melch built the Beis HaMikdash in Yerushalayim, you had all the pieces and the location. So it was like really complete by the bias Rishon. Um, so it's it's very interesting, <coughs> like Mishkan Beis Hamikdash, Mishkan Beis Hamikdash. So it's it, today we have the location without the pieces. So we're in the opposite extreme of the Mishkan. <coughs> Mishkan they had the Beis Hamikdash without the Makom. Uh, during the time of the Beis Hamikdash, they had the Makom and the Mishkan. Some say even many of the same Caleb from the Mishkan went into the base of Mikdash. And today we don't have the Mishkan, they're Gundos. The, 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 the pieces we don't have, but what we do have is the location. So um, just think about this in terms of real estate. You know, we've got the place, but so what does that mean? So I think that the, the, um, the, when the base of Mikdash is Bim Koimoi, Bim Oinoi, Bim Koimoi, it is where it is. So um, everything is shalling. We've got the whole story. Um, the shechina is exactly where it's supposed to be. That's the pshat in the base of Mikdash. That's the, the mirror, the satellite of, the, of what's going on in Shemayim. The time in a mishkan, go back earlier, the time of the, of, the, of the Midbar, where we had a mishkan, so we didn't have the location, meaning we had the shechina, but we didn't have the location. So it was like, it was a time of galus. And this is the shechinta begalusa. This, this, the Mishkan shows you you can have the whole, the whole dogma of the Olamas al Yarnim, but you don't have the location. So you can have it in Gullus, which was when the, when the, when the base of Mikdash was destroyed. And I'm sorry, going back and forth in history, but follow me here. Uh, when the base of Mikdash was destroyed, so everyone was, whoa, we lost the location. And Yecheskel said, you lost location, but you still have a Merkava, which is the Shechina on wheels. So what he was really saying is, you, you lost the location, but you still have the Mishka. Don't forget, the Mishka didn't have a location either. Uh-huh. So, and that's the Merkava, wheels. It moves. There's, there, there's, you, you, you've lost the Makom, so it's, it's also a Chetzi Nechama. The, the, the Mishka was Chetzi, and and the, the, the uh, Yechezkel talked about by Yesheni, you know, or Golos, he talked, we're back to Mishkan stage where we can do the whole thing, and then he goes on to explain <coughs> how he did but that didn't disappear. The, 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 the Babylonians didn't destroy the, the uh, Mishkan, they just destroyed the Makkah, in Shemayim, that is. So we don't have the Makkah. And then, um, with the carbon of the Bay Yesheni, what we have is, as I said, we have the Mako. <laughs> it's like it's a funny. Uh, we have the Mako, but we don't have the Mishkan. Like, what does that symbolize? <coughs> There's an idea of Shechinta Begalusa. So here we have a Makom of Asher Sashchina, but we don't have the, the mechanism which, which causes the Shechina. You instead have a mask. And, you know, <laughs> it's. it's um, so it's, it's Kodesh. Kitchel uh, Shaita, Kitchel it's, Asalavai, it's Kodesh. But is that Kodesh because there's a base of Igdash there, which represents the whole Barocha in Shemayim, it's a Mako. You know, you know I, was, I was thinking this morning, just, just to bring this to, like, very much down to earth, you know, they, there's a whole, um, I was just reading the news early this morning, <laughs> that uh, there, there's a whole uh, tumultgal going on in New York because the Israelis made a display in the uh, UN or something about um, showing how Jerusalem is the capital of the world and the, and the Harabais was always our centerpiece and obviously the Arabs <coughs> went berserk and, and you know, 
what do you mean? Like, how could, they, they were actually quite uh, generous because they didn't say what they usually say, which what does Yerushalayim have to do with Jews, or what does the Haravais have to do with Jews, it's an Arab thing. They didn't say that, but they say, well, you're completely negating the, the, uh, the Muslim history of this that went on for centuries and centuries, and the Christian history of this went on for centuries and centuries, and it's capital of Judaism, like Mapitel, capital of Judaism. So it was clever in their, in their title. But, but I, I was just thinking to myself, like, isn't it interesting, like of all places, that there's a big debate, the main mosque, you know, Al-Aqsa is Dafka on the Harabais. Like, like, make it where, make it a Ram, Ram, Ramallah, or like, why? <laughs> so the answer is that, according to their uh, tradition, that's where Mohammed, uh, you know, went up to the Shabbat. But what, why there? I mean, uh, uh, maybe they could claim that that, like, isn't it interesting, like, um, Yashka also um, uh, hang, hung out, like, you know, in the Harabayas. Uh, um. they, they change also like the Sitzuk story in the Arabs. They change. I'm not saying they don't they change, but I'm saying Mohammed himself, um, like, was attracted to the Makam Hamikdash before he made it into a Arab Makam Hamik, Makam Kodosh. Like, he, like, he was there first, right? First he went there. But why'd he go there? You know, it's interesting. The Gibar says that, uh, that Alicia ben Abuya, Acher, um, <coughs> Possibly also fell into one of these categories of, of a, uh, you know, uh, could be he was also like an early Christian type of a thing at the end. So it's, that's what it seems. He was a Christian. Sifre uh, Minim, Nafal Mi Kisa, like Sifre Minim is always Christian, you know, but uh, he was also like he went horseback riding on Yom Kippur, Lemakam Kodesh HaKadoshim. Like the, there was this attraction to that particular location, you know. So uh, I was saying to me, if you ask me, the, um, like the fact that the mosque is there and the fact that Yashka, though Kash anyways, he was altogether Jewish, but the fact that he hung out there and everybody hung out there, so is, is, a, is the biggest raya of the Kedusha of this place, Bikoyde, Adrava, like, you know, I think, I think that it should be, uh, it's a good thing I don't work in the UN, I <laughs> we would, we would uh, we probably wouldn't have a state of Israel anymore, but, but, I'm just, but, but, but it just seems to be by logic that, that he had no sentence. Like, you know, what do you think he, why do you think he went there? Because it was a holy place. In other words, it was a holy place we called him. Like, man, they didn't just pick a random place and make it holy. That was the bunker with the base of Middash, clearly. So for already, like already a thousand years, he pointed to this place as, as the Abed So, I mean, so if you believe the whole story, so, I mean, it's a, it's a great endorsement to, to, to Jewish history, I think. I mean, it's not, it's not the Shiv. This Mordechai has a whole... Kedar. Kedar has yeah. a shir on the subject. Uh, Muhammad never went to Yushalayim. He had some daven in that direction because he was trying to convert the Jews in Mecca and they were daven in that direction. There was his suffer called his whole yeah. Kesha to Yushalayim where he couldn't convert them, he killed them, and then he started davening his uh, how, how, how does he know that? Uh, uh, it's it brought historically, apparently. No, well, historically, I mean, uh, historically, uh, I don't know what historically means, but uh, according to the Quran, um, I'm losing my way, <laughs> but, but uh, according to the Quran, he tied his uh, um, his uh, mule uh, right there by the by the so by the coastal, and he was Ola Lavala. So there was a, there was a new story the cloth. This was not brought in the Quran. Secondly, it was only the fourth is. Khalifa. This, I read it. And it's, it's brought in the oral Torah of the Quran, not in the Quran. <laughs> I'm not going to argue with you. It's a Tosefta. It was the fourth Khalifa. They were already in Syria, and they made up the story because they couldn't go and do the Hajj. Okay, okay. I'm just saying, I'm, I'm not saying Lushi Tosa. I'm only, I'm only saying Lushi Tosa. I don't know if the guy ever existed altogether. I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm only saying that Lushi Tosa, that's the biggest endorsement of Kedusha. But, uh, but uh, here's, here's the main point, getting back, not certainly to your you, you, you have, um, what? no, you have three matzavim. This is what I really want to bring out here. You have three conditions of the Jewish people. Um, one condition, all having to do with where the Shekhinah is holding. One is the condition of you have the Shekhinah without the Makom. Another is you have the Shekhinah and the Makom, which is a time of a place of Tikkun and a place of Geula. I spoke about yesterday a little bit, and the other thing is where you have, like you have now, where you have the makom without the without the mishkan, without the base of mikdash. And there are those who want to go and say, let's build the base of mikdash, but in the meantime, there's no base of mikdash. I'm not, you know, whether you can jumpstart that thing or not, I don't know. But but um, you have these three conditions, and the three conditions of of the three states, if you will, 
of, of, of the, the whole world, not even Kla Yisrael. But Betzalel, so get back to the Nefesh HaChaim over here, um, Betzalel was described by Shlomo HaMelech, Hashem B'chachma Yosad Aretz Koinei Shemayim B'tvunna, that he, he, he had the Chachma of Briyas HaOlam, nothing less than the Chachma of Briyas HaOlam, understanding that the world, when Hashem created the world, there was no world. So of um, all the spheros that we talk about, Chesed, Gura, Tiferes, that's all the creation of the world. So before the creation of the world, the Toyu Toyu <coughs> was the Kesser. So, so, um, that, so obviously the world was created before the spheros, but from the three higher spheros. You don't need to understand this, you just need to know the math. So um, it was created from the three higher spheros. Look, I'm getting all these blank looks here. <laughs> but, uh, but, but, so, so you have to tap in to understand the creation of the world. You have to tap into the three higher spheres, which you can't do, but Batzala was able to do. So we don't have the Chachma, Batzala had the Chachma. But to tap into the Chachma Bina Vadas and understand that just like Hashem made the world with this Chachma Bina Vadas, I'm going to make a Mishkan. Because making a Mishkan is making a model of the Olam Asoyan. So it, the, the, it's, it's really, really cool. The, if, you, if you look at the, um, you know, if you get that book, you know, Hamishka Mikhailov, that beautiful coffee table book, which has all the pictures of the basic English, what you're really looking at is you can get a glimpse of, of, the, of the higher worlds that we'll never see in this life. Uh, um, you get actually getting a look at the Oil of Masalyanum, the Pirut, which, which I'd actually like to get into. But Seder is called Chachm. Beautiful. So, so um, Kutchen, and how does that whole thing work? So he says here, let's just finish the paragraph. Before Shem Chazal, once you know this, before Shem Chazal, that he knew, listen to the words carefully, he knew how to be Mitzarev Oisiyos, the world was created from Oisiyos, he knew how to be Mitzarev Oisiyos, which were the same Oisiyos which HaKadosh Baruch Hu used for the Bria. Meaning that Betzalo, the Betzalel, when you understand Betzalel, don't think, you know, Betzalel art school, art school um, you know, uh, menorah. When you're thinking Betzalel, you're talking about the, the, like the Mekubal on the highest level of Kabbalah that was able to understand the, the, the three spheres El Yoynos, which nobody has a, a, a concept of, and, and except for maybe that they're there. And, and he took the same Oisiyos, the same blueprint, and built the Mishkan with that, the blueprint. He took the same blueprint and built it. So Moshe Rabbeinu was really excited about this guy. <laughs> you know, like, okay, you, you showed us. But we were in the Midbar. Moshe Rabbeinu wanted to bring it into Eretz Yisrael. Let's add the location to this. We're not holding there yet. Not holding there yet. But, but um, the, until Shlomo HaMelech. So it starts there. L'chein, says the Rechaim Elijah further, Ha'odom me'am ha'kodesh. Now let's talk about man. How does the human fit into this? How does the Jew fit into this? Ha'adam ne'am ha'kodesh. Shekolagam ken kol sidre breishus v'sidre amarkav. But here's another thing. Like Betzalel pulled it out and built a building. But Hashem <coughs> pulled it out and built a man. And the man is also a microcosm. So theoretically, um, Betzalel would have been able to look at a person and understand the oil of Samoa, but it's probably easier to look at the Shemayim and, and be with our voice is to look at a person and see how the Shemayim works. But it's there, within us, it's there. Hugam ken dugmas v'tavnis ha-mishkan v'ha-mikdash v'chol keilov. We're talking about Tzalo Belikim. M'chuvan b'seder iskashish pirkei evara v'gida v'chol k'chaisa Every limb of a person, every sinew of a person, every energy, um, every drop of energy of a person is all an exact replica to two things, to the Beis HaMikdash and to the Shemayim. Shemer Muzim Kulambadam. The Zayar elaborates on the exact parallel between the Adam, the Beis Hamikdash, and the Shemayim. Wouldn't it be good to know? Shame a Rimuzim Kulam Ba'adam. Echad Ba'echad, Yikshu Ba'seder, Kisei. Another paragraph. <coughs> so I just want to say something here that, that um, Moshe Rabbeinu, um, by the um, 
Melchama with Amalek before uh, Tyre, right? So by the Melchama of Amalek, so um, we were fighting, we had a war. We left Mitzrayim, all of a sudden we have a war. It was like 1948, you know. <laughs> Get independence, have a war. So we had a war with, with, with uh, Amalek. Um, I don't think Clyde Israel is counting on this. Having a war with Amalek was frightening, and Amalek were beastly. They were, they were, you know, very, very rough Arabs um, to have a war with. So Moshe Rabbeinu climbed on top of a mountain and he picked up his hands. Hands. Um, and when he picked up his hands, Gavar Yisrael put down his hands, Gavar Amalek. Um, so the hands were. What were the hands? If you if you take the hands in in parallel to the base Hamikdash, it was always just he was pointing upward. There was there was the hands of Moshe Rabbeinu were Chesed and Gevura. That were the hands of Moshe Rabbeinu, and what he was doing really was connecting the Shemayim to the Aretz, and then a different kind of energy came out. And that's why Gavar Yisrael, when he put his hands down, he broke the circuit. So Freik the Mishnah, this is the way it goes. Like he's doing Mocham with his hands. What's the kasha there? What's the word, maybe? Why is that such a big kasha? Have you Moshe Rabbeinu turned sticks into snakes and split the sea? And like that. What's the big kasha? So, so apparently the, the the way I understand the kasha is. The kasha that the mission is asking, right? Um, the, the kasha is that that we're talking now about making malchus. And malchus has to be in this world, so you don't you can't do it with chesed and gevura. So what happens to the to, to the rest of the tree? How is that energy coming down? Okay, so the chesed and gevura, klai yisrael is mistaklin klapi malo. It doesn't say, by the way, that they davened. Does it? When Moshe Rabbeinu's hands were up, he stacked the klape malo. What does that mean? It doesn't daven. He should have said daven, <laughs> right? Daven. The the, the stacked klape malo is that okay? We're not working in the in the um, in the adam part of the olam esoyanim. Let's look right up at the olam esoyanim itself. And go straight up to what what Moshe Rabbeinu was a was 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 a choreograph of the Dugmasa Shamala, as every autumn is, but he was the ultimate. So his hands up brought us to Histakul Kapimala, that Kla Yisrael somehow intuitively understood that let's let's just stay, let's look up. Now the, the strange part, let's look up at what it's really all about, and the Muhammad that's going on in Shamayim. That um, that the kisei Hashem, ena kisei sholem, that there was something in Shemayim going on, in, with with the hiskabras of Amalek, kiyad al kais ka mochemes Hashem ba Amalek. Let's take the war up there. Let's, let's, it's like a, a you know like today they want to take the wars and make them into cyber wars. Like why why you know what's the use of putting boots on the ground? Let's but but it was all it was all affected by the Shemayim. So. Don't look at Moshe because then there's a danger of Moshe becoming some kind of an Avodazar Chasushal. Look at what he what's going on. But it's not like he was up there pointing. He was a dogma. It wasn't pointing. Uh, he was a dogma to the to the Olam Asalyanim. Now what's interesting is that he got tired. You know. I mean, what does that mean? Like he should have been working out? <laughs> like like I mean, I, I mean, I'm getting tired just demonstrating here, but but, but I mean, Moshe Rabbeinu was a gibor. I mean, he 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 was able to just a, just the next bar she was able to to carry the luchos. It was a, what was he what was he so tired about? And what happens? Aaron and Hur come and they support his hands. Now look at the look at the choreography over here, where Aaron was hoed, or let's make it easier. Um, again, Chesed and Gvura, but on a more earthly level. Hur died in the eagle. He was Gavur. Hur died protecting or trying to stop the Jews from building the eagle Hazav. So um, he was Gavur. Aaron was Aaronim, right? Aaron was making peace um, between everybody. He was Chesed. 
on a more sophisticated level, it was um, Netzach and Hod. Um, so that what he needed, what 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 the top spheros need to support them is Earth, and it had to get closer to Earth in order to hold up his hands. Um, and Klai Yisrael was Malchus. So so Kozman, the Klai Yisrael was Mistaklum Klape Malo, and they were connected to the to the Elam Yarnim through this whole choreography of Aaron and Hur and Moshe and his hands, Klape Malo. So he's Daklum Klape Malo, you had this kind of a triangle go, going on. Um, so then we were Miskaber, then the Malchus works. If you try to make Malchus <coughs> out here without connecting to the to the oil of Yarnum, so what, what kind of koach do we have against Amalek? You know, then it's a question of firepower. Uh, they were trained in military warfare. We were not trained in military warfare. What 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 koach is it? I I, be, I believe that this um, you know this sounds like uh, too uh, esoteric. Um, the answer is it is, but um, you don't need to like. You know, I always say, like, you don't, you don't need to know how your brain works in order to use your brain. You don't have to know how your car works in order to use your car. We're end users. Um, but it, it, it's important that all of the miraculous wars that we've had in, in, in the history of Klai Yisrael, including even in our days, you know, that, that we live to see, um, it's in, in so far as we're connected Lamala, in so far as we're connected Lamala, so, there, so we're, we're, we're Masliach Lamata. As much as we're not connected to Lamala, we're in a very uh, dubious situation where we're talking about Kohi, Yotzim Yadi. It's a little derech. It's a dangerous, uh, it's a dangerous derech. Now, you can't do it without the Kohi, Yotzim Yadi, because you needed Klai Israel to be down there with spears and swords and, and fight. There's no question. That's Malchus. But you can't cut off the head. You can't decapitate the, 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 the spheros. You can't do that. And, and what, what was happening here, long before there was a Mishkan, it seems to me, um, maybe the Archaim speaks this out a little bit, but long before there was a Mishkan, a, a year, right, uh, a good year before there was a Mishkan, um, it was Nis, Chodesh Nisan of, was, of the next year, there was Moshe Rabbeinu in the whole Adam part of the Mishkan. Adam part of the Mishkan. Not to decapitate the, the you know, the Mishkan, not to decapitate the, the, the um, Spheros. Betzalel chaptus, chachma bina v'das. Let's go up to the kesser and be mitzarif oisius down here. Okay. Kind, of, kind of amazing uh, stuff. Great right. son of Hur. Interesting. Right. Where did he know? <coughs> how did he know how to do that? So the answer is that I mean, it has to say grand, well, grandson of Hur. That's the gevura part, but he's also a grandson of Miriam. Huh? Call it. Call it. <laughs> um, wasn't like it just didn't come like from nowhere. So it could be that the even the better answer than Yer Shemayim, Rishus Chachma Yer Hashem, had a Masara. <laughs> had a Masara from from. I mean, this this these people knew. I mean, they, there there was a Masara. Miriam, I mean, they were macabre things from from Yosef who learned with Yaakov, who from the Avos, right? they they knew even where the Atzmas Yosef was. They they they, they had a in other words, this particularly I think particularly Shevet Levi had a had a, 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 a Masora as to know exactly what we're all about as Jews even before Harsina. They, they knew who they were. They knew who they were, and they had a Masara. So the Masara, the Masara was coming the same as the Sefer Ayatzira. And by what everything I'm describing here to you this morning is in the Sefer Ayatzira. Like this whole choreography, I don't know if that's the right word, but that's the only word I know. The, the, but this whole, um, you know, this, this dance that they were doing was, was it was more than remez, it was more than symbolic. It was, <coughs> it was a, a metzius of let's shape ourselves like the spheros, and then we become, um, Indestructible. Um, lastly, it would um, maybe completely off tangent, but the Hashan Achoshis that they looked at. Also, the same is mission, the right? Same kind of thing, yeah, with the same principle. Right. Well, the mission puts them together. So, how is it the same principle? 
Right. You know, I mean, I don't. I mean, it is a tangent matter, and besides that, I don't know the answer. But, um, but it's it's clear. I mean, it's always been clear to me that um, it wasn't accidentally a nachash. A nachash was in Gan Eden, the the um, competitor, if you will, of Hagadosh Baruch Hu himself. You can listen to me. You can eat from the eight. Eat, listen to me and eat eat free from the eight sadas and tiak helayim. And we explained last week. That that was the sitra achra, the nachash represented the sitra achra, which is a whole other mechanism in Shemayim. Which, which, I believe, what was happening is was that Klai Yisrael was plugging into the wrong generator with the nachash. So, what are we putting up the nachash? Let's put the nachash up there and understand that that gufa is created from Shemayim. You can go higher than the nachash itself. Meaning, like here you have Hashem. And here you have two sources of power, the source of Kedush and the source of the Sitra Achra. So don't, you know, look at the Nafesh, where does it get its uh, uh, Kalach from? It's also significant, I think, if we have a minute, why the Nafesh becomes important here with Nafesh HaNechoshes. It was made out of copper. As was the Mizbeach HaChitzom. Mizbeach HaChitzom was, was made out of copper. In the Mishkan. Hmm? In the Mishkan. Right. And the basement. Maybe. Stone. Hmm? I don't think so. It's stone. Oh, stone. Mizbeach Havonim. But it had a, it was Kenegid. Let's put it this way. It was Kenegid, the Mizbeach Hanachoshis. Choshis somehow, Nachash Nachoshis, it's not just a pun, um, represents uh, Chitsanius. It represents Chitsanius. The copper, copper um, pennies are very difficult to bend. They have machines that do it in the uh, rest stops on the highway. <laughs> Never understood the eight Sahara for <laughs> taking a penny and destroying it. Hey? <laughs> that cost a quarter. <laughs> like, but you want know, to just destroy the quarter, go right to the point. <laughs> you have to destroy the penny. There's a machine that destroys. Like, who even thought to invent such a? I have a machine that can destroy a penny. Uh, why is it even legal? <coughs> but uh, but the, the, the nachoshes is, is very unflexible, and the nachash is, um, is the most flexible of all animals. Nachash nachoshes is a, is a stereo in Ayo Bay. <laughs> nachash nachoshes is, and, and th this, is what, this is what the symbolism of it was, and it became the caduceus medical symbol until today. That that the, the shot is that everything's been a shemayim. What, what you think is inflexible is really very flexible. So, I mean, but again, like on a deeper level, the the uh, sitra achra itself has a boss, has a hierarchy in the sitra achra itself. Um, but let's do this paragraph. Lazais, therefore, hareki vada yikir inyan akodesh v'amiktash shriyash kinasa yisparachu ha'adam. The main thing here is the adam. If you look back at the circle. The main thing is the Adam. She miskadish atzmi karoi, that if a person is makadish himself correctly, bekiyum amitzus kulon shehem plim gam came b'sharshen ha'olyon. The pirkei evre hashir koyma kibiyachos of klal kol olamus kulon. Like I'm, I'm describing to you with Moshe Rabbeinu, that if we understand that we're the base of mikdash, even more than the base of mikdash is a base of mikdash, and a dugma shomalo, we're the base of mikdash and a dugma shomalo. Ayin Zayhar Truma as a Mishkan Tasa Raza the Yichud. Okay, it's all there. As who adds my Hamikdash Mamish, I'm the base Hamikdash. O betoychay Hashem Yisbarach Shmoy, which last week I was <coughs> underlining those words. O betoychay Hashem Yisbarach Shmoy needs to be understood. And as the Neviei Sheker said, Heichal Hashem, Heichal Hashem, Heichal Hashem, Heima. Um, that's where we left off last week. That. The Via Shekhar got this part right, that we are the we are a base amigdash. You don't need a base amigdash. You are holy unto itself. You don't need to go to the base amigdash. You are a base amigdash. Heichel Hashem, Heichel Hashem, Heichel Hashem, Heima. The mistake was, as I pointed out, why were they in the Via Shekhar then? They were in the Via Shekhar because they told the people, and therefore you don't have to do tshuva. Therefore, it doesn't make a difference what you do because you're just intrinsically holy. And that was a mistake because the difference between a person and a base of Middash, because the base of Middash has no Bechir Chavshis. 
even though in the Nagunim, the Mesa Mikdash is crying and the walls, you know, but it's, in the Tiyas, it it's, um, doesn't have a Bechir Chavshis. We do, which gives us more, like, we're, that's why we're a bigger dugma, dugma to the Oilam Mesoyanim than even the Mesa Mikdash, because we have Bechir Chavshis also. That's where the Nabi Yashag you don't have to do anything, you don't have to do Chuvi, you you're holy, finish, you're holy, you're the holy of holies, you're, you're, the, you're, the, you're the holy of holies. It, it's it's, um, it's a Yetzirah, it's Nabi Yashag in a sense, that, um, the Holy of Holies with, but you chose wrong. So you got to deal with that. You have to do tshuva. You're the Holy of Holies, as he says, im yiskadishatz mei By the way, this might have been all of this, just <coughs> a, as a political aside, this may have been an, uh, um, a response to the, to the Balatanya's derech of a person who has complete kedusha and you can't mess it up, which is probably also true. But there's a part of us that you can't mess up. But, but um, I think the guy and Rechaim Velazhin were worried about the fact that, you know, a person could walk around, you know, sort of Hasidish feeling, with this erroneous Hasidish thinking, well, I'm okay, I'm holy, I'm even the, even the most simple Jew is so holy, that's true. Water carries, every, every Hasidish story is, uh, is about the, uh, uh, the Pasha de Yid, which, is, which has truth to it, but there's also some responsibility we have to take as the, uh, you know, there's like a little, little maintenance here with, with um, the Shashem. So he says, so he says, he adds, he's worshiping, he's kind of shots to make her right. And then he says, zal v'shachanti b'soicham, and like Chazal say, v'shachanti b'soicham. Everyone knows, v'asuli, the beginning of Parshish Bikudai, v'asuli mikdash, v'shachanti b'soicham, which is it's kind of like wrong Hebrew, v'asuli mikdash v'shachanti b'soicham, make me a basic mikdash, and I will dwell in it. What's b'soicham? So what's Chazal say? V'toich kol echad v'echad. That if you basically make the base of Mikdash, the Shekhinah will be in you, the other base of Mikdash. Now the, the, um, I just want to point out, um, I, I, I search and search, I don't think there's any such Chazal. Of Asali Mikdash V'Shachanti V'Soicham V'Soich Kolechad V'Echam Yisrael. I asked him this morning, where does it say that? There's Rashi. What's this Rashi? There's no Rashi, there's no Rabbah, there's no Arachayim, there's no anything that says this. It's here. Asali Mikdash V'Shachanti V'Soicham, Google it, you'll find Nefesh Achayim. So, that's a, that's a, um, He says here, um, K'maymer Chazal, did I say that? U K'maymer Chazal. Shachanti B'Soicham, B'Soicham, L'Namar Elo B'Soicham. I once found an Alshech. There's an Alshech that says such a drasha. B'Soicham, L'Namar Elo B'Soicham. But the Chazal it isn't, for, but whatever. I, I don't know why. It says, it says here that it says, it says, it says, it says it will dwell in them. Yes, in but it. where's the sword? It's not a Gemara. It says, uh, <coughs> the Alshik Shemot. Shemot. Alshik Shemot. Alshik yeah. It's not a Gemara. Uh, it's not a Gemara, it's not a Medrash, it's not a Chazal, it's just Alshik, which was recent. Um, they're great, it's a great source, nice work. But uh, it's, it's, um, it's not a Chazal, I'm just saying. But, but the, the, the concept is, uh, I just um, my uh, my uh, hobby of debunking uh, <laughs> myths, <laughs> <laughs> mythical Chazal. <coughs> it's just like you know, some of the other things. Dafka, Dafka, the things that we're always quoting, you know, are, are the wrong ones. <laughs> it's like, you know, you know at least this comes with the Alsha. It doesn't come from Benjamin Franklin, like most of them do. <laughs> Take it, but. Um, but the, but the, the concept is for sure true. The, the, in other words, the concept that he's bringing is clear in the Zoyar, and not without the drush on the Pusik, and that is that everything um, moves from there, from up there, to us. So if we make the base of Mikdash, here's the, here's, the, here's the deal. If we make the base of Mikdash, so we have the base of Mikdash, and then we have us, and, and this is the Chiddush of this, of this um, <coughs> one sentence or one phrase in the, in the Nefesh HaChaim, that here's the Oilama Sel Yarnas. I wanted to get further in this, we'll have to do it um, Thursday. But here's the Oilama Sel Yarnam, and here's the Adam, which is a dogma, and here's the Beis Amigdash, which, which is a dogma. So we're a dogma without that, and that's a dogma without us, right? So, no, the, the, it's a circuit. That Ba'asuli Mikdash, you make the Beis Amigdash, Vishachanti Besoicham, and then you become a Beis Amigdash. So somehow or another, um, you got to figure. You got to find this in the world of electronics in the digital world. Somehow or another, this doesn't light up. Adam doesn't light up as a base of mikdash shamata until there's a real base of mikdash sitting there in in in, in Yerushalayim. Like, 
and and um, and we so we could try, we could be a dugma of a base of mikdash, but when the shechina is begalusa there, so the location or at least so there so now there's like there's the dugma, there's the mala, there's the there's all the kalim of the base of mikdash, there's the location of the base of mikdash, and then there's the adam, but the adam you you, you can't have um, you know it's like. Lake Aloiva, Lake Arev, you know, you, can, you, you can't have a, a dugma, you, an Adam can't be apparently a complete dogma of the base of Mikdash, Shechina complete, unless there is this, this um, other, in other words, it's coming this way, unless, unless there's this other, it also goes the other way. You can't have a, a base of Mikdash complete unless the Adam's complete. That's why when we do Chatayim, the base of Mikdash gets destroyed. So these two, two pieces, these two points on the bottom of the triangle, seem to be very, very deeply connected that this doesn't light up if this is not Peseder, and this doesn't light up if this is not Peseder. You with me on this? Like it, it's connected. The oil is on your stay in any case. But you have, to have, you have to have them all. So we have a lot of different modalities for the, for the Shechina, the goal of the whole thing. And I just want to learn, to, I want to learn in detail with you on Thursday. It's a very exciting limud to understand exactly how, what the parallel I'm, I'm, it's just fascinating to see how deep the parallel is uh, in detail, how we know, between the Beis HaMikdash, or the Mishkan for that matter, and the Adam. So we can understand what are our hands, what is our heart, what's our mind, what's our kidneys. It's extremely important, and the reason is because the whole Avodah of the Beis HaMikdash you can do within yourself. It, it's not going to work the same way because there is no base of mikdash, and the right thing to do would have be to have the kalim and the mikdash. It maybe works better. I'm thinking when you go to the to at least the you know I'm not recommending this, but if you go on to the Temple Mount, maybe it works better because then you have like a particular base of mikdash at the back of it, a base of mikdash. So you got something there. But but um, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know how these things work. But but uh, but what what's clear is that is that all of this exists within us, even though it doesn't exist over there. It does exist within us, and therefore. Um, uh, uh, you know, we'll learn that the avoida of Karbanas can be brought within us, the avoida of Kodesh Kedoshim can be brought within us, the avoid, all the different avoidas, the Zerika Saddam, can be involved with us. And, and Pirut Gummer, we know every single detail of it, it wasn't anybody's imagination, it's the Messiah of Chazal, exactly, exactly how this, this works. So that's, that's where we need to get to. So what is the Merkava bringing?